One of the most common questions that I get when somebody finally brings a plant home is how often should I water this plant? And that could be challenging to answer. And sometimes how I answer that is, especially if I'm growing that plant in my own home, I could give experiential guidelines. So I might say, oh, well, I have that plant growing in my southwest facing window. I've had it growing there for about three years and that gets a lot of intense light. So I find myself that I'm watering it two to three times during the summer months and only one to two times during the winter months. And of course, that could actually be some really helpful guide points for that person who has that plant. However, there are so many factors that come into play for the frequency of watering plants. So many that it's actually better to learn how to observe the plant. And those are some of the tips that I'm going to be teaching you today in this video. But let's step back and actually determine why water is important for plants in the first place. Water is one of those things that is totally non-negotiable when it comes to plants. I mean, there's even plants that could grow in the darkness of the forest floor and they might be reliant on other plants for their nutrients. However, water is something that basically all plants need and it's largely because plants are made up of water. Any plant body is somewhere between 80 to 95% water. So it is so important for their basic functioning, all the way from actually keeping their form to drawing up nutrients through the stem and up through their leaves. I mean, everything from a tiny little moss, which is only like one cell thick, that if it doesn't have water and doesn't create their own little like ecosystem and microcosm of moisture around it, it totally dries up. To all different types of succulents, and that could be anything which has succulent water storing roots to water storing leaves and stems to also these caudexes, which are these kind of bulbous structures that store water as well, to even stems that have little white fuzzes like this cacti, which oftentimes use it not only to bounce sunlight back to protect the moisture on the inside of the stem of this plant, but also might use the fuzzy nature to collect anything from like moisture to ocean spray in order to be able to draw that water down into its root system. All the way to plants like these resurrection plants like this one, Rose of Jericho, or this resurrection fern, which pretty much look like they're dead, but just given a little bit of water and their life comes back to them and then they set seeds, or in this case of the fern, spore. So these are just a range of examples of how much water is important to plants. So let's talk about those factors that are affecting and making it more challenging to understand the frequency of watering your plants. I actually have about a dozen listed and this is probably not all of the factors. So if you could think of any more, feel free to leave them in the comments below but everything down to the size of the plant. So if you have a really tiny plant or if you have a really large plant, that really large plant with a large root structure is probably gonna take up way more water than maybe that small plant. And if that small plant is in a large pot versus a small pot, well, then you probably don't have to water the large pot as frequently because there's more substrate in it. So even the size of the pot will actually matter. Also, the type of pot would matter. If you have a terracotta, for instance, versus a plastic or even a glazed ceramic, that might actually maintain the water in that pot and it will reduce your frequency, for instance, if it's plastic or a glazed ceramic, than if it is actually a terracotta pot. So size of plant, the type of plant even, so for instance, if you have a maidenhair fern, that wants a constant moisture, whereas a succulent which is totally fine with being dried out in between waterings. Next thing, potting medium ingredients. So I have a different types of potting medium ingredients here. Now if you have something that is a little bit of a peatier mix, well it actually can maintain the moisture a lot more compared to if it's a mix with maybe some cocoa chips or perlite or even lava stone. So if it's something that has a little bit more of a well draining material, then the water will actually go through more quickly than if you have something that is a primarily peat based mix. Now the soil structure or the potting medium structure also comes into play. So 
What I mean by that is if you have different drainage layers. So say you potted up a terrarium and so maybe you have a drainage layer of rocks and then you have a drainage layer of charcoal and then you have a drainage layer of soil and then you have some sand on top. All of those different things will actually drain water very differently. And if your plant is really only growing in that substrate, then it only has this little amount of substrate to grow in because it likely won't be growing into that charcoal layer or that stone layer below. Speed of growth, some plants, especially during the growing season, grow really quickly. And as plants are growing quickly, they're not only taking up nutrients, but they're also taking up likely more water in the process as well. Now there's totally seasonalities. I mean, I'm in spring season right now, so all my plants are growing wildly, although some plants are actually going dormant as spring approaches summer. So some plants like this Pentopentia, for example, actually loses its leaves in the winter months for me and is just a bare stem. So I'm not really watering this plant during the winter except for maybe a little spray here or there just to make sure that it has a little bit of moisture while it's in its dormant season. Temperature is a big one. So especially if it's really hot and dry out, that sun is going to evaporate a lot of the water from your vessel. So you're going to probably need to water it a lot more. But if your humidity is high versus low, then you might have to water your plant less because there's more moisture in the air and therefore having to water your plant is maybe unnecessary. Whereas if you have low humidity, then you might have to water your plant more, especially for some of our subtropical and tropical varieties that require at least a more moderate humidity. The other thing that is probably the most important is the intensity, quality, and quantity of light over time that you're giving your plant. And I often say that the amount of water that we give plants is often based on the relation to that. That's probably one of the most important points. But then of course, there could be a combination of any and all of those factors. So for instance, if you're growing a plant in a southwest facing window, as I am with this one, in a terracotta pot, in a very porous medium, then I might actually have to water this one a lot more if it were in a plastic pot, which keeps in that moisture and is with a peatier mix, if you get my drift. So there's so many different types of permutations or combinations of these that affect the frequency of watering, which just brings me back to the conclusion that I had mentioned in the beginning, that you're probably better off at being able to observe your plant rather than guessing and just saying, oh, well, once a week, I'm going to actually water this plant, which again is a great guideline, but maybe actually in that scheduling, you could start to schedule a quick cursory look over your plants on a daily basis so you can learn how to observe what those plants are telling you, especially if they need some more water. The first thing to do is just observe your plant. I mean, so many plants will give you different indications. So for instance, if I was observing this succulent that I have here, it might actually start shriveling its leaves. But if I have a plant like say my pilea that has a little bit of a thinner leaf, it might actually look like it's flopping over and looking really sad. So because this has a succulent structure here, it's not really a plant that would flop over. So each plant has its own unique habits when it doesn't, it's not getting the amount of water that it needs. Another great example is my plants in the Marantaceae family or the prayer plants. They have a tendency to curl their leaves over and inwards away from the sunlight. And that is to actually protect so it doesn't lose any more water from the plant. So all these different kind of water saving strategies are really different per plant. And as you start to go around your house and observe your different plants' habits, that's going to make you better at knowing when to water that plant. The second way is thoroughly inspecting and observing the soil of your plant. Now, what do I mean by that? It's very cliche for somebody to give you the advice of check the top two inches of the soil and that's if it's dry, then that's when you actually water it. But there are problems and challenges with that. Now, I do say if you actually are doing the top two inches of the soil, that's good, but it actually doesn't go far enough. And I'll give you an example why. So if you have this full pot 
and the top two inches feel dry, but the bottom part of it is actually moist, then if you start filling up water, you might actually be overwatering it, especially if it's a plant pot that doesn't have a hole in the bottom. So that is something that you have to be aware of. Now there are different ways to be able to inspect the plant at a deeper level, and some of them are like really simple. You could take a chopstick like this and stick it down along the edge of the pot like so, and if you pull it out and it's relatively dry, then you probably know the lower layers of the soil are dry as well, so then it's probably good to water it. Now if you go down and you pick the stick back up and you see that it's a little wet and there's maybe some soil particles that are sticking to it because it was wet soil, then you're going to say, okay, well maybe I should check it tomorrow or the following day in order to be able to water it. If you have a deeper plant pot, I like this little contraption here, which is called a soil sleuth. So what you do is, again, stick it down on the edge, about two thirds of the way down the pot, and then you turn it, and it actually comes up with a soil sample in these grooves, which is super cool. Then you could take and feel the soil sample in those grooves, and it might actually be dry in the first three grooves, but it might actually be wet in the bottom two grooves. And you could see that, no, like maybe in like a day or two, it'll actually be dry, and then that's when I have to water my plants. So highly recommend a tool like this. And then of course you have your water meter, which I have to say, I think these could be pretty accurate, but I don't think I have one that's so accurate. So if you have a recommendation of a moisture meter that you like and you think is super reliable, then let me know. But basically they usually have an on and off switch, and you could see that this is on right now and it has this little light that blinks when it's dry. And so it notifies you that like, oh, I actually have to water this plant. And then if you stick it in and the soil is wet, then it will actually stop blinking. So something like that could actually be very helpful. Now, the other reason why checking the first two inches of the soil surface is not a reliable indicator is because if you're actually doing some bottom watering, which I do in some of my plants, and I know that some people have questions on that, which we'll get to in another episode, but if you're watering from the bottom up, then oftentimes the top layers of the soil will actually be dry because those roots are pulling up the water in the lower parts of the soil. And oftentimes that water, and the reason why we water plants thoroughly through to the base, is because those root tips and those root hairs are really growing down below as opposed to surface level. So if you have somebody who tells you just check the top two inches of the soil to see if it's dry, you could probably correct them now and say, nope, you have to go a little bit deeper in order to understand whether that plant is fully watered or not. Now the other way to inspect whether a plant is fully saturated is of course, if you're a good plant person, you have a hole in the bottom of your pot. And I have to tell you, when I'm telling you all of these good uh, tips, it doesn't mean that I follow them all the time either. So these are just kind of like perfect form in a perfect world. Uh, and I do have plant pots that are cash pose that don't have holes in the bottom. And I have to be very, very careful when watering those plants, which I'll go over in a subsequent episode. However, if you are new at keeping plants in your house, I highly recommend having a hole in the bottom. Even this one has holes at the base, but it actually has a basin attached to this pot. So that is always a good thing. And the reason for that is when you water thoroughly, you will see water come out of the base and that's when you know the plant is fully saturated. Now, if that water goes into a basin, and again, these are techniques and tips that I'll give you in a subsequent episode, you can remove that basin and you take that water out and drain it in your sink because you don't want that water being pulled back up into the roots for so many different reasons. So I hope this helps clarify why it's so important to be more observant when it comes to watering and the frequency of watering your plants. And be sure to stay tuned because in the next episode, we'll go over how to properly water a plant. If you like these back to basics videos, then give them a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel as it helps me produce more videos. And if you want to further dive into houseplant care, then check out my houseplant masterclass at houseplantmasterclass.com.